Alright, welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video. Today I'm going to be crashing objects into Earth and seeing how much damage they can do. So yeah, let's get started. The first object I'm going to crash into Earth is an asteroid. Here's how small the asteroid looks from Earth, so yeah, as you can see, it's pretty tiny. And uh, yeah, let's see how much damage this does. Alright, well that was a... Honestly not... Okay. It wasn't as major of an explosion compared to what we're going to see later, but it still did a bit of damage. I mean, Indonesia is probably never going to be the same again, as uh, is Western Australia. And uh, yeah, particles flew sort of all around the globe. But yeah, overall Earth is still pretty intact. If you look at the map here, nothing really has changed. Other than this sort of gray spot around here, but yeah. So yeah, overall, the first collision didn't really do much. However, if you go here and check what Earth's surface looks like, as you can see, the area where the asteroid landed is extremely heated. So it did actually affect Earth to a big extent, just not really, you can't really tell from the surface here. But as you can see, yeah, if you go to the very center of this warm area, it's 300 degrees there, so it's safe to say that this area is inhospitable. But speed up time, let's see if this area sort of cools down. Actually, no, it looks like it's spreading a little. Oh, I know, it's because the uh, metrics on the map are lowering and henceforth, yeah, it's so. This isn't actually representing as big of a temperature, and as you can see, if we go back to the center, it's now only 100 degrees, so yeah, okay, it's not really, it's leveling out. Well, alright, six years have passed, and if you look at the map, everything's sort of back to normal. As you can see, it's hard to tell where the asteroid actually landed by looking at this map, because, well, it's all leveled out. This area is now back to the normal that temperature that the equator would be at, and uh, yeah, the circle has now completely disappeared. So yeah, that's collision number one done. The next thing that I'm going to launch at Earth is the moon. Here's what it looks like from Earth, and as you can see, it looks a lot larger, and well, that's because it is a lot larger. So yeah, I predict the moon will have a lot more immense of an effect on Earth, might even cause a wide-scale impact that affects the entire surface of Earth, but yeah, we'll see. If you press play, I set time to go like four times slower than last time, because last time you can really see the explosion that detailed, so, so yeah, now we can see firsthand what the moon's gonna do to Earth. Alright, we're almost there, any second now, and... Whoa. Wow. So, uh, yeah, I was right, this is affecting the entire surface of Earth, because, uh... Yeah, it's safe to say that every single species has gone extinct. Even the oceans are now heated up, although... You can still see, yeah, you can still see traces of the original continents there, that's kinda cool. Oh, Africa looks totally decimated. So, uh, yeah. As you can see, there's fragments spewing everywhere, actually. If we zoom out... Yeah, the area where Earth is is now just a huge red light. So, uh, yeah, this is actually, honestly, pretty cool. Now if we go to the surface menu, and, uh... Yeah, average temperature, 2,911 degrees Celsius, that's, uh, and as expected, you can see where the moon hit, it's right here, which actually is where Africa is, so yeah, it makes sense that you can't even see it anymore, it's like, you got the Red Sea coast, you got the tip of the horn of Africa, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Also looks like Western Europe has gone too. So, uh, yeah, it's safe to say that, actually, if we go to composition, let's check the, uh, life like, 19%? Wow, wow, how? That's odd. I guess some creatures have genetic features that let them survive in these temperatures, but, uh, so yeah, still, that's kinda... I would, uh, not wanna be here. And, uh, Earth similarity, 8.23%, uh, yeah, I'd say that makes some sense. So, uh, yeah, Earth has been pretty much decimated. Although, you know, it could always be a little more decimated, as you will see in a sec. So now I'm gonna launch Mercury at Earth. Here's what it looks like from the perspective of Earth, as you can see, we're getting bigger. So as you remember last time when we shot the moon at Earth, the whole world lit up in orange. There's dust spewing everywhere. So uh, yeah, let's see if a similar effect happens. And I will press play now. We can see Mercury's gradual trip towards Earth, and... There we go. Oh wow. So this is just orange, it's becoming more white too. Damage looks to be similar to what happened with the moon. But uh, let's see if we can identify any of the continents. Actually, if you look at the map here, uh, yeah, I can't see anything. Once again, when we look at Earth from the perspective of the entire solar system, it's just a clump of orange dust and whatnot. And if you check the surface menu, average temperature, 3,556 degrees. That is, uh... Yeah, and a uh, maximum temperature, 4,000 degrees. That's a... Uh, and as you see, here's the point at which is 4,000 degrees. That's probably the result of debris crash landing at an immense speed. And a reminder, time is only uh, going 20 minutes per second, so uh, yeah, this is all happening, honestly, in not that long of a time span. The planet's gradually cooling, but uh, yeah, this map is changing. Like, yeah, you, you just saw there, like, 
And the reason it keeps turning out blue is because there's little spots of degree crash landing, again, at an immense speed. And it's making it so that that particular point is, like, super hot compared to the rest of the planet, so it makes it all... It colors it all blue because, compared to that one point, it's honestly pretty tame. So yeah, say Mercury had a pretty similar effect. Now let's go with the bigger planet. And that planet is Mars. In case you don't know, Mars is almost half the size of Earth. So it's safe to say that this effect might be even more grandiose. So let's press play in 3, 2, 1, no. Okay, well I didn't really need a countdown, but uh, you know. Here it comes. Actually, I'm gonna slow down time. Almost there. And, alright, I'm gonna slow down time, and let's see the effects. Super slow-mo. Actually, this is only like one minute per second, so yeah. And... Whoa. Yeah, you can see the rocks flying off as it's happening. Wow. And watch the effects reach over here, and yeah, there we go. The planet is now engulfed in, well, orange. And uh, yeah, as you can see, you got orange parts, you got white parts, you got blue parts of the particularly hot areas. Actually, let me check that. Yep, that was right. So uh, yeah, average temperature, 6,438 degrees, so we're getting even hotter. Maximum temperature, 8,317 degrees, and uh, yeah, here it is. And as you can see, the very dark blue, the coldest area on the map, it's like, well actually here it is, 3,618 degrees, so yeah, yeah. If you ever want a nice cool vacation and a nice destination spot, uh, go over here, where uh, probably North America once was. 3,000 degrees, I'll be cool off. You know, as you burn horribly to death. Uh, yeah, let's check the composition tab to see. Yeah, life life likelihood, 8.94%. Okay, that's actually kind of surprising. And uh, Earth similarity, 3.06%. Uh, that is not surprising. So let's watch as these rocks. You're yeah, gonna speed up time, and let's, yeah, let's watch as these debris flies out into the middle of nowhere. Actually, if you zoom out far enough, you can actually see it shooting off. There you go. Let's see Earth is cooling, but there is still rocks being hurled at it. But the degree is cooled down, and uh, yeah, there we go. This is what Earth looks like, well, only a month later. Life likelihood, 31.5, which, eh, I can see it. And uh, Earth similarity, 23, so the planet is sort of repairing itself, I guess. Yeah, average temperature, 1000 degrees, it's cooling off, although you still see this one particularly hot spot, that's probably where some debris fell. Actually, if I speed this up, I want to see what Earth looks like after this. Six, as you can see, there is some traces of water here. And actually, it actually looks like vegetation, too. Well, uh, yeah, here's what Earth looks like in the year 2025. As you can see, there's hardly any vegetation, and uh, the continents look nothing like they once did. And uh, yeah, here's what remains of Earth after being crashed into by Mars. A flocky hood, 85.1%, so yeah, there probably is life here, and uh, Earth similarity, 98.3%. So yeah. Now, uh, I was going to crash Venus into Earth next, but uh, I actually think I'm just going to skip ahead, because I don't think it'd be much different than the next one I'm going to do. Earth. I'm gonna crash Earth into Earth. And uh, surprisingly enough, Earth actually does happen to be larger than Mars, wouldn't have guessed it myself, but uh, yeah. I'm actually more interested to see how this affects Earth's physical characteristics here, like whether it's gonna change its mass by a lot or its radius. I mean, obviously it's gonna change its average temperature, but like, what's it gonna do? I think that'd be interesting to see. So uh, yeah, and three, two, one, go. Again, not really much is happening right now, so let's speed things up. See, it's getting closer, so I'm gonna slow it down in the nick of time. And uh, I'll go to the real Earth. And, uh, yeah. Let's watch. This is gonna be immense. And... Oh my gosh. Whoa. Holy crap. This is just odd to look at. See rocks are already spewing out of here. And oh, it's burning up. And uh the original Earth is actually losing mass. Oh wait, oh! Oh the Earth I'm actually the Earth I shot into original Earth is actually swallowing it. Oh wow, oh yeah. Holy crap. Alright, let's check out the characteristics I was mentioning earlier. So uh mass, 1.72 times the original mass of Earth, so uh yeah. So yeah, gobbled up 72% of the matter of the original Earth. And a radius, 1.2 times the original Earth, so that's pretty cool. 
And uh, average temperature, 6,499 degrees Celsius. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, this is where the collision took place. And then this is the backside of Earth that, well, backside of the new Earth that wasn't involved in the crash. But, you know, it's still like 2,000, 3,000 degrees. That's immense. Maximum temperature, 12,000 degrees. Wow. That is certainly something. I can check the composition tab, see the similarities. Life likelihood, 9.6. Okay. It's 6,000 degrees Celsius. I. Wow, okay, that is, uh, that's gonna take some genetics. And our similarity, 2.94%, as I would expect. And, uh, yeah. That's Earth, after being crashed into by Earth. Although this is the Earth that crashed into, the original Earth. There's a lot of Earth. Uh, yeah, so. Alright, so there's two groups of debris, as you can see. There's, like, the debris that's forming a little line here, shooting out to the side, and then there's this sort of circle of debris that's surrounding the planet. And, uh, oh, jeez, alright, so yeah. If you look at the planet, it's sort of becoming blue, but not blue with oceans, that's blue with heat. Average temperature, 8,000 degrees, oh, jeez. Holy crap. And yeah, as you can see, it's emitting a lot of blue light, and then there's this odd area, which I would assume is a lot of fragments it's crashing into, or maybe it's some gas being released from Earth as a result of the crash, but, uh, yeah. If you zoom out in the solar system, as you can see, it's another puff of orange dust. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna fast forward time and see if Earth can eventually return back to normal. As you can see, it is cooling down, because obviously it can't stay like that forever. So it is actually cooling down pretty quickly in the scheme of, you know, a planet. As you can see, the red warm areas are sort of being faded away as they're cooling off, and yeah, the water is taking back Earth. There is absolutely zero vegetation, as you expect, when the average temperature is 400 degrees, but uh, yeah, this is Earth after a collision with Earth. Well, Earth after it collided with the original Earth. Again, odd. So uh, yeah. There we go. Alright, so for my final performance, I'll be shooting a baseball at Earth. Which, uh, I hear you asking, a baseball is super small, what effect would that even have? The baseball would probably just fall into the ocean. Well, no, this isn't any baseball. This baseball is going at the speed of light. And I can't go too far in, because for some reason the game doesn't render Earth if I go too zoomed in, so, uh... Alright, so if you're wondering, we're going at 13 milliseconds per second, so... Looks like it's gonna be landing in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Chile, and... Oh! Okay, didn't really do much. I mean, there's a lot of debris shooting off here, but, uh, yeah. Overall, I would say this was pretty harmless. Okay, I'm not satisfied. I need to destroy Earth by shooting an object out at the speed of light. Alright, so I'm gonna shoot the moon at Earth at light speed, and that's probably gonna have a much bigger effect, because, as you remember, when I shot the moon at Earth at a normal speed, the effects were global, so, uh, yeah, this could potentially destroy the entire planet, so let's press play. So, uh, yeah. Will this destroy Earth? Yes. Yes, it did. Holy crap. Alright, pause. What's the temperature? Alright. Average temperature. 197,632 degrees Celsius. And this is on the moon. Earth is no more. Like, Earth's dead. This is just the moon. The rocks are literally, like, light indigo because of this. Actually, let's look at this fragment. See how warm it is. 59,000 degrees. Holy crap. You got an interesting color palette here, I'd say. Like, even the little rocks shooting out, they are luminous themselves. Like, that is... that just gives you a gauge as to how... Oh, wait a minute. Why is there two moons here? You're thinking, oh, because there's an actual moon. No, the save file, this particular save file, doesn't actually have any of the moons here, so... It could be the result of the moon splitting in half. That could be... why? But, uh, yeah, that's actually kind of an interesting anomaly. This, this moon actually has a mass of 1.2 times mass of Earth, so this could actually be a remnant of Earth that's sort of mixed with a lot of moon and matter, and therefore the game's considering it the moon, but yeah, that could be it. Because uh, this moon, as you can see, its mass is nothing nowhere near Earth, so... So uh, yeah, thank you all for watching this video, and uh, yeah, have a good rest of your day. See ya! What the heck? Uh, yeah, that includes the legacy of the moon. Bye.